wrestling fans around the corner around the world. I'm Dan Marani. And this is your boy JTG. Unbelievable Wrestling Fans, a brand new Wrestling Insider Special Edition is now. Wrestling fans, Boston Wrestling MWF summer of 7 p.m. Seven nights a week has exploded online. Join the superstars and legends on Wrestling Insiders every night at 7 p.m. Spread the word. As first reported to our Boston Wrestling MWF family on Patreon, big things are happening as we wrap up our biggest spring ever and kick off our summer of 7 p.m. beginning Memorial Day night when brand new Wrestling Insider episodes premiere at 7 p.m. seven days per week. We also kick off our Make-A-Wish Drive in high gear to help grant wishes to awesome kids that have been waiting over a year in many cases. After an extreme Saturday with New Jack and a demolition doubleheader with Axe, Put the women and children to bed as fresh from the Shawn Michaels A&E biography, Marty Jannetty returns for a party with Marty triple header Friday, June 18th, Saturday, June 19th, and then joining us again for the WWE Hell in a Cell pay-per-view Sunday, June the 20th, taping episodes of Wrestling Insiders, watch-alongs, and cyber autograph signings. It's going to be a huge weekend that demands fan involvement. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com for complete information and pre-ordering option. Let's help keep wrestling legends working and great wrestling talk show content being produced. We can't do it without you. Help us explode into summer seven nights a week at 7 p.m. Boston Wrestling Sports and the MWF explodes into a new year of unknown with professional wrestling content galore, and we need you to join our family. Every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after we review the previous night's Monday Night Raw, it's Wrestling Insiders at your house with the unpredictable WWE Hall of Famer, Mr. USA, Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights after WWE, NXT, and AEW at 10 p.m., you never know who's going to show up on Wrestling Insiders Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred, Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Journey Through the 80s and 90s on Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. Friday nights after the lights go down at the Thunderdome on SmackDown, it's John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, bonus live episodes, pay-per-view watch-alongs, and more. If you want early, ad-free access to all of our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library, and to help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times, for less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, join our growing family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Expect the unexpected in 2021. This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Wrestling fans, welcome to another Wrestling Inside. It's very, very happy to be joined by this man, JTG. He is just too, I don't know if he's just too good, maybe just too great I'm, I'm at this wearing, point. I'm wearing the shirt brother. right now, Jay the God. Why be a king when you can be a god? Now, is that how you go about reality day to day? That's how I do it. Unbelievable. The day <laughs> we are recording this, as you know, is part of our Wrestle House endeavor. We had a plethora of guests from every era of wrestling here in this home. A WrestleMania weekend, and it is, if it wasn't for coronavirus, it might have been the third straight WrestleMania Sunday we spent together. Yeah, that um, corona put a damper in a lot of, a lot of, messed up a lot of plans, but we are here. We are here. 2019, <laughs> we were at a, one of those fan reunions, the morning of WrestleMania 35, and that turned into a pretty memorable day for you. I remember seeing some kind of emotional footage of you guys uh, at, I don't know if I'd call it a WrestleMania party or a gathering, uh-huh. But when uh, your Kofi great worked. friend, but yeah. the guy that worked with us way back when he was a younger guy, Kofi yeah, before Kingston. Before the dreads. <laughs> before the dreads, right. <laughs> Kofi Kingston went on that same night at MetLife Stadium uh, in East Rutherford, New Jersey. And what a night. You were you, you were a little it choked a, up. Yeah, it was, a, it was an amazing night. It was, um, I was actually at the arena. I was sitting front row with my buddy to watch. I wanted to make sure I was there. I was sitting ex- uh, ringside. And Shad and um, MVP were at a... Um, well, maybe that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it was Shad okay, and MVP okay. was at a WrestleMania uh, event in, in, in... I remember Madden. MVP, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, they shared, and they shared those those, those tears together. 
and that was in, in excitement, just feeling the energy there at the um, at the arena, at the stadium. Yeah. Now you still love the business that much that you go out to attend it like um, that for, had, for a big one for something like that for the guys. Uh, say that one more time. I said you still love the business that much and a big enough fan of the industry to go out and support the guys Absolutely. like that. Absolutely, I'm still a fan. I was in the audience uh, on uh, on the floor last night at WrestleMania, and then I was watching um, Sasha, Sasha, uh, Sasha, Sasha Banks and uh, Bianca Belair, and it was great to see Bianca Belair win the title last night. I, I like to be, for, for, for WrestleMania especially, I like to feel the energy of the crowd. Isn't it something? It's, it's amazing, yeah. I, I totally forgot. You know, it's been a year since I've been to... <laughs> anything. <laughs> yeah. Anything. Yeah, so it feels good to be back in front of a, a crowd like that. You know, other than the fact we got drenched several times, it really was... Uh, yeah. A great experience for me. What was really cool was being to have having my ex's little one seeing it through his eyes. Because to me, yeah. you know, it's event number eight thousand two hundred twelve. Yeah, yeah, but for his first WrestleMania, he yeah, was like, so excited and oh. the pyrotechnics. And I said, just imagine if all of these seats were filled without the little fake heads, fake heads yeah. that they had <laughs> tied to the seats. And it was a unique experience. But you know what? It made getting out of there a little easier traffic wise, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. With twenty five thousand. You guys don't want to get caught after a WrestleMania. <laughs> and especially waiting for an Uber. Oh my gosh. Oh, you were waiting for an Uber? I we walked we walked like a mile or two to get away from the uh, the hot spot. Oh, we would have given you a ride. Oh, I, I should have told you were there, yeah, bro. Man. <laughs> uh, at least it stopped raining by then though. Oh yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. Now, did you, did you have a background with Bianca or Sasha, or was it just something that you wanted to see? I met them a few times, and they were um, they, they were all cool. I think they they were fans of Crime Time, especially Sasha Banks. And well, she um, was another one that was with us when she was younger. yes, yeah. Boss Time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I that match I definitely wanted to see because I saw uh, Bianca rise. I was uh, there when Sasha was make, making her rise, and I wanted to see those two go at it. And they had such a great storyline. And they're both great at what they do. And I had to be there to, to feel the energy and see that match. I got to say this, though. <laughs> they went out there. They put on a hell of a match. 110% effort. But uh-huh. what about the opener? The opener? Oh, that was a great match, too. You know what? And I, ha- <laughs> I hate to say this. Is I love to break his and Shelton's balls. Uh-huh. They are both older than me. Which physically does wow. not appear to be the case. But <laughs> according to Mother Nature, it is uh-huh. the truth. And I-, I thought that was the match of the night. Well, he's yeah, they, trying to get that full Nelson under Drew McIntyre. The, 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 the Hurt Locker? He calls it the Hurt Locker. Yeah, yeah, the Hurt Locker, yeah. Yeah. yeah that was, that was exceptional. Yeah, that, that caught, me, uh, caught me totally off guard because I was, in my mind, I'm like, oh, this looks like a, 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 a glorified Raw match. But no, they, they put on a good, yeah. <laughs> they put on a good reversal show. Reversal after story. reversal after yeah. reversal after reversal. Now, to me, I'm not the world's biggest Drew McIntyre guy. Yeah. But I see, you know what? He's young enough. Mm-hmm. He's got size. He's got kind of the, almost like the James Bond accent type thing going. Okay. So I said, you know what? They did such an exceptional job with him going over at Royal Rumble last year when he eliminated Lesnar. And Lesnar just yeah. laid there on the floor <laughs> for several minutes. I yeah. mean, for that, yeah. he really sold to make yeah. McIntyre look good. And then we wound up with the coronavirus WrestleMania in a warehouse. So to me, <laughs> if, <warehouse>. if <laughs> I had the, the magic pencil... I would have never had that man lose until there were live fans around. I would rather gauge how over or unover he was mm-hmm. by the actual fan response. It's one thing to go by Twitter and different yeah. metrics you might see on a computer, but there's nothing like that live crowd to tell you, yeah. this is the guy we can go with as uh-huh. a top guy. What the whole, yeah. This is a guy we can make one of the faces of our company for the years to come, or mm-hmm. this is a guy that... It, you know, it may not work out with. Yeah. And they had him lose the title for three weeks to Randy Orton for no reason. It didn't do anything didn't for do TV anything. ratings. Nothing. And then they had him lose the title to Mid-Card Miz. And even though, you know, Miz, it uh, did a good job to build up Bobby yeah. with the angle they did before that match. Mm-hmm. But I think they really did a disservice to Drew. And in my mind, I thought, and I, I think the world of Bobby, he worked with us yeah. back in Boston many times. Great guy. Does so much great work in the community out in uh-huh. Denver for the kids out there, and I just said, you know what? It's, they're going to put the fucking title on him for two weeks, and they're going to that, that would have pissed me off. <laughs> you know, and there's a guy. Oh, don't. I don't. I'm sure you know the whole Bobby backstory, but I mean, a guy that maybe not Cena, but could have been not one but one A as far as the two brands go from 2007, mm-hmm. from all that uh, over a decade loss. Uh-huh. Over a situation that was so unfortunate that could have been resolved, maybe 
Yeah. But I mean I still remember that match he had with John Cena with that the Great American match. Yeah, that was a real that was a really good match. And I think that was his You guys watch that match back. Oh my god. Bash yeah. 07, seven as a matter of fact. <laughs> um yeah, you were still there for that one. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, still yeah, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, just a legit athlete. He has credibility. He's not one of you hate to say the uh yeah, I, I hate to be it's like you have so many friends in WWE, but I think Kevin <laughs> Nash puts it yes. A lot of the times you put on the TV and it looks like you have Abercrombie and Fitch models. Yeah. Right. Flying and flipping doing, around. Yeah, doing Cirque yeah. du Soleil. Now you got yeah, you some heavy hitters on the screen. Like, well, makes you stop. If you're not a wrestling fan, when you see these guys on the screen, it makes you stop like, okay, let me see what they're, what they're doing. Okay. Bobby <laughs> might not have the best verbal game, yeah. but everything else he does to everything me is pretty great. much perfection. And that's why we got MVP there. And he's the great mouthpiece for there him. So I, but to me, I said, you know what? They're going to, almost like a sequel to a movie, yeah. they're going to go retro. They're going to be kick, Claymore, kick one, two, three, and this time McIntyre, instead of the Performance Center, is going to win the title yeah. in front of the 25,000 and Raymond James. And I was actually, very, very often do I react to the wrestling show with all I've seen, <laughs> but I was actually genuinely happy that Bobby retained the title. And yeah. after waiting so many years, I hope they really go with him. I really hope. I, I like I like this era. This era. That's us, baby, right yeah. there. <laughs> that era, those men held the titles for like a year or two. Didn't he hold the he held the belt for like a year before he wrestled? Uh, Four to five, he held the world title. Oh, there you go. And now is this he just switches hands and hands. It means it makes the title mean nothing. It doesn't do anything for the talent. I want to go back to the when when titles were held for a year or two it meant something. And now you, hopefully you'll probably <laughs> enjoy this. When Barry Dasso was here, we kind of did a, a. I like to do. To me, WWE. Um, can do what they want to do. They yeah. bought every library they wanted to buy. <laughs> they have their own network. They can create, sometimes recreate history however they want to do have it. You, have you seen that meme? It's Vince McMahon with the gaunt, with the uh, with the Thor glove, and he yeah. has all the um, the companies as rings on his no, finger. It's I've amazing. never seen that. Oh, that sounds <laughs> kind of funny. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. He just there standing with the looking like like, Thor, like yeah. Crockett and all the WCW, a, yeah. ECW, and all they, the <laughs> AEW next. I'm tomorrow. sure there'll be many more to come <laughs> as time goes on. But I mean, my point is they can do whatever they want with it. Yeah, it's the much. content, but that doesn't mean uh, there isn't room for programs like what we do. There mm-hmm. are guys that'll probably never be a, a JPG three disc DVD release. They'll yeah. probably never be a demolition. Who was my favorite uh, as a kid. But um, anyway, I think I mentioned to you that we had Smash here on Friday night. Yeah. And we our time that we were looking at was when he first came in as part of Demolition in 1987. And these these uh, you remember, I'm sure you remember, as a guy just yeah. a couple of years younger than me. Mm-hmm. He was these were the cots that they used the, the big one WrestleMania yeah, to push him to the ring. Yeah. And to try and show how much respect he had to the big event, Barry Dasso Smash left his Diet Coke can in front of the two. <laughs> Guys, so I had to break his balls about that. Oh, I said, Barry, yeah. we're trying to put this error over, <laughs> hey, and you're you using your Diet Coke as the cord to block Andre and Randy. Wow. What are you going to do? Okay. What are you going to do? <laughs> now, you were a big fan as a kid. Oh, yeah. Both my uh, parents were wrestling fans. Mm-hmm. And I, I grew up at the age of two, being uh, oh, wow. my mom taking me to Madison Square Garden and taking me down to the to the um, to ringside. That were those were in our seats, but and then having security be like, "Hey, can I see your tickets?" And she's like, "Oh, I'm just coming down and then making our way back up." I remember watching um, Saturday Night Main Event. I remember watching that was the show. Macho Man, you got eyes for Elizabeth. I remember, I remember that and Good lust in your eyes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was an amazing, amazing time. And then. Dropping elbows on my sister's Cabbage Patch doll. Oh, I thought you were going to say your sister. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. The Cabbage Patch doll was probably a little safer. Doll. Yeah, and just being a wrestler fan ever since a kid. And then um, being ashamed to say I wanted to be a wrestler. So I said I wanted to be an actor. And then actually, You were ashamed to want to be a wrestler? Because I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. Everybody was into basketball, football. And if you said, uh, yeah, I, like, I watch wrestling. I want to be a wrestler. They were like... I'm like, what? Okay. <laughs> well, by the time you kind of broke in, it was an industry that was on the decline when it came to mainstream popularity. Exactly. So that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So you and I, even though you were a couple of years younger than me, we probably became fans right around the same time. Because 86 was when I started to oh, watch yeah, it. Oh, yeah. Yep. I went, I could, it, still, I couldn't tell you what happened on Raw a couple of weeks ago. Uh-huh. But those monthly Boston Garden events, I could probably give you the top three or four matches <laughs> every month from the first time I went. In August of 86, as a little five-year-old man, uh-huh. until it shut down in 95. Wow. Those, Wasn't it amazing they, that they would, they would come every month? Every, we had, well, you were Monday for MSG, right? 
I can't remember. I can't remember. I, can't remember. I just remember going. I remember the day. I, I thought it was the weekend. I thought it was the weekend. No. Occasionally, but most, yeah. unless there was like a sporting conflict, it was okay. usually every okay. third Monday MSG got the oh, house okay. show. Yeah. Boston had gen again, you know, there were a few exceptions with the Celtics and Bruins, but it yeah. was generally one Saturday per month we got it. In the okay. <laughs> I mean, before the main event would begin, the ring announcer would, you know, they'd do the tease about the next yeah, top next three show. or four matches, who it was going to be, and oh, is it going to be Hogan? Is it going to be Macho? Is it going to be Andre? Is it going to be the Warrior or Piper? Yeah. And, you know, that, that to me, it was the most part of the event. Yeah, yeah, to see what was going to happen on the next one. Mm. And then I turned to my father, who absolutely fucking hated bringing me. <laughs> And I, oh, he, he didn't like bringing you? He hated it. No, oh, no, yeah. because back But he liked time, wrestling. He just didn't like bringing you. No, he hated it. He hated it. Oh, the whole experience. He hated everything. Oh, that's a good dad then, because he still brought you. Well, my mother <laughs> broke his balls. Oh, too. okay, okay. Who okay, knows no, what no. she wasn't going to give him. He didn't take <laughs> okay. me and had to listen. It could have been another sibling lost. Who knows? But, um, um, but, you know, what, it was kind of a scary experience. I don't know about MSG, but I mean, I remember, you know, as a five year old kid, there'd be these. Animals getting there early, banging on the doors. Let us in. Let us in. Really? Let no, us in. I wasn't like that. Anymore. And I'm holding on. But you know, I loved it at the same. It was almost like a horror movie as a yeah. kid. I'm five. I'm holding on to my father's shirt, and I'm looking yeah. around at all these animals. And then you probably, I'm sure, never went to the old garden. But when you went in, the guys where the parking lot was, they actually had to go through the concourse to uh -huh. get to the locker room. So they'd set up this barricade uh -huh. near where the merchandise was and the popcorn yeah. was and you know, when the heels came in, they were getting heat with people as close as, I mean, literally, probably not too much of a further distance between me and you. Yeah. You know, like when Bobby Heenan was coming, Weasel, fuck you, asshole, uh -huh. Weasel, and, that, and then Hogan would come in and it would sound like the place was going to cave in. It would uh -huh. be so exciting and... But the good old days we'll never have again. Yeah, um, when I was a fan, when I was when I was going to the uh, MSG when I was in, when I was in high school, it was something similar. Like you had your fans, and then you had your your smart your your your, your, your smart marks. They would go to the come like two or three hours before the show, and they would stand by um, the backstage uh, entrance, and we would just stand there by the barricade and watch all the, the wrestlers come in. Even if we just got like a, a little, if they rolled down their window just a little bit, that would make our day. You know, I remember. Um, Billy Gunn, he was coming in with a, in a limo, to MSG. He rolled his window down, gave everybody a middle finger. Everybody popped and took pictures, and that made our day. And that's a tough spot to park over at MSG for the guys. It's very hard. Yeah. I don't even. Um, yeah. I would never. I would never take a uh, drive a car rental to, to MSG. The parking is like a hundred bucks for the day, and the traffic is ridiculous. I love performing at MSG. The crowd is great. But I remember it was me, Beth, and Shad. We were in the car trying to get. To, we thought we were going to be late, and if you're late, that's like a Five hundred or fifteen hundred dollar fine, if I can remember. Wow! And I remember we were like literally two minutes away, and it took us a half an hour because of the traffic, one ways, and they didn't want us to. Go. It was ridiculous. Uh, and it, and <laughs> I love the New York atmosphere. I love the New York crowd, but I hope they never. And I know they will, but I hope they never do <laughs> WrestleMania there again. That yeah. weekend two years ago when we were together was brutal imagine, because yeah. we did the two days of the WrestleCon. The third mm. day we did. I don't even remember the name of what we did was, but we did it, uh -huh. uh, and that was kind of lackluster. But that's a different story for a different time. But I, like I said, I like to take in the atmosphere, the ambiance. I like to listen, mm. even for the people that buy tickets. They still have opinions, thoughts, and so on and so forth about mm. what they like, what they don't like. And I think sometimes WWE loses that. Sometimes they just don't listen. They read Twitter, and mm. you know, they try and present business metrics the way they want to present it at the you know, the quarterly stockholder meetings. Yeah. But you know, sometimes I think they'd almost do themselves justice if they have people, people that work for them, that uh -huh. no one would recognize in the crowd. Just listen. To I it. love to listen. Uh, so I, I so I tried to do not only all the conventions, uh -huh. but, you know, we had to do all the transportation for the guys that we had. You guys came in on your own and were at WrestleCon with someone else. But we yeah. had Zeb and Tony and who else? Oh, Jerry Briscoe. So we had to go back and forth to the WWE hotel, which yeah. was in Brooklyn. Oof. And then after dropping everybody off at the hotel, I thought I'd be smart. Oh, we don't need to spend four hundred dollars a night staying in, <laughs> in Times Square. We'll stay at Newark. Nah. And that turned into about a two-hour ride each way, which was just of course. It, 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 I, I, I needed <laughs> I needed like a month to recover. It was just the worst three or four days. That's right. And then the worst thing, and I'll, I'll tell you a funny story from last night. You may not know. But um, the night before WrestleCon, Tony 
gave Virgil my phone number to try and have him oh. latch on to us at WrestleCon. And I, 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 I wanted, I wanted to kill Tony. He kept calling and calling and calling. I just, I didn't answer. I didn't want to deal with Virgil. I didn't want to have anything to do with Virgil. Then we show up at the hotel after we got Dutch. Was he waiting for you? Zeb, he was at the fucking hotel. So I said, there's got to be a side entrance. <laughs> <laughs> so we were yeah. circling, circling the hotel. We found a side entrance. And poor fucking Dutch, I think you see, has his broken leg. It's almost, uh, it looks like a candy cane almost, the way it's shaped, the way you. Is it still shaped like that? Yeah. Oh, he was okay. here yesterday. Well, it's a little better, but little he's, better. He, he can't. He needs a lot of help to try okay, and damn. navigate life. Mm. But, um. So we, just picture that. You know me. I'm not in the world's greatest physical condition either with my thing. <laughs> but the two of us snuck in and we got away from Virgil until he was waiting for me the next morning at WrestleCon. And I was just so tired, so fed up with rides, so uh -huh. fed up with traffic, picking people up, dropping people off, airport runs. I just said, I have no room. Um, you and know. you know what? It worked. But the funny thing is, mm. did you know he was there yesterday? At WrestleCon? No, WrestleMania. Oh, he was? He was, during that rain delay, he was roaming the concourse, doing posed photos for 20 bucks with the fans. I mean, oh, I was texting. He's still trying to make his million dollars, huh? I was texting <laughs> some of his peers, and I, I got a picture of it, and they were like, you got to be shitting me. Yeah. But I, for him, that rain delay may, may have been the only person that benefited from probably it. Was made him. A, probably made a little, made a little a thousand dollars there, hopefully. All you get it. I said to my ex's kid, I explained to him, I said, that guy over there was actually the million dollar man's bodyguard. Uh -huh. Do not make eye contact with him or he will never go away. And, I, and how's the gimmick go? You want to take a picture? Yeah, fine. All right, 20 bucks. That's it's not, almost that's... like a, when you go into Times Square, hey, man, come here. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm a musician, man. I got this new DVD. Yeah. See, you got to check, check it out. Check out my You got to check it out. You got to check it out. Oh, check it out. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's all right. Sounds good. What? I don't even want the fucking thing. <laughs> no, no, no. It's yours. No, no, no. Come on, man. Five, ten dollars, whatever me, it is. Support me, support me, Cole. You gotta yeah, support me. Yeah, you're yeah. a New York guy. You know. Yeah, I know the deal. <laughs> so tell me this: as I anxiously await Glantz to give me my time checks as they come along, uh -huh. the million dollar question that What's I'm up? sure you constantly get asked: you are not a, a, past your peak, your prime by any stretch of the imagination. You're in great physical condition. You're yeah. well spoken. You're a good representation of our industry. Why aren't you in the mix? We'll, see, we'll t only time could tell. I'm hearing a lot of rumors. Um, I have people. Rumor, who, now what are the rumors? Some of the rumors, like, oh, this, this company's interested in you, and um, will you be? Am I interested? Who reached out to me? Um, I have like talent from companies reaching out, not the, not the main, to see if, if there's any interest. And I said, if the, if you know, if it makes sense, I'm 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 all on all on board. If it makes sense financially, if it makes you know, I just don't want to rest. I want it to be. Something I want to have fun. Yeah, yeah. You know, like when I came to WWE in 2006, it was paying me to have fun, travel the world and have fun. And then a few a few years later, it became work. But I want to go back to having and fun. And literally, yeah. sadly, as over as you were with the reactions that you get when you'd come out, yeah. the last couple of years you were doing virtually nothing. Yeah, really. like, <laughs> honestly, yeah. and it sucked. Yeah. I'm sure it was someone that wanted to go out there and actually work. You yeah, know? I love performing. I love getting in front of a crowd. Um, I've been watching this since since I was two, so it's just been it's ingrained to me and in how to uh, how to get the fans' attention and how to tell a story in the ring, and that's been that's been one of the things I've been really been working on um, is how to tell a story in the ring, how to be an author in that in that uh, squared circle. <laughs> and if we want to get another cheap plug, and you actually have written a couple of uh, online books, if you oh want. yeah, cheap plug, let's do it. Uh, I, wrote, <laughs> I wrote two books um, after my first release in 2014. You know, you guys can check it out. Damn, why did I write this book? Um, it became, a, it became an Amazon bestseller, a cult classic. And the second one, I, I didn't want to write a second one, but the fans demanded it. And Dan Wright, I write this book too. And you can check it out on Amazon. And not physically, there's no physical copy. No, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a physical, there's a physical book. And, and you there's didn't an e-book. And side. there's an audio book. I was, you know, I wasn't. You didn't my... bring a physical <laughs> Wow, I'm hurt now. Have you, you've seen the wall of... Insanity nobody nobody, nobody wants to see the book no more. Everybody wants to get the audio book. So that's the best seller. The audio book. The audio so you book. actually narrate the whole book? I went into the studio. I spit some hot some hot fire in the studio and I laid it out the the audio book. People have told me that I, I, 
The second one I'm not as familiar with, but uh-huh. the first one was just it was fantastic. Yeah. So you, I just kept it. Re- I came from a, a, a um, I, like when I read a lot of books um, from autobiographies from wrestlers, it always feels like a little, a little bitter. Like they, like they kind of bitter at the business. And I just wanted to take a different approach and just be funny. You know, you know I told you I wanted to try yeah. this comedy thing. Yeah. I, I yeah. did it in my book. <laughs> That's what I like about this show. I mean, we have a little bit of everything. We have yeah. fun. It can be light. We have comedy. We have serious topics yeah. we run into. We have guys that sometimes get on fire about certain subjects and people that yeah. mean a lot to them. <laughs> sometimes, you know, they, they want to relive and tell the stories about some of their best friends that they had experiences with. Yeah. So when you, once people sit down and say, well, the, the quote unquote shoot interview, that's not exactly what I try and look for when we produce these shows, because yeah. there's just so many different angles you can look yeah. at what we do. Let it flow so and have many, fun. So many great <laughs> things about it on top of the things that drive you nuts. And, mm-hmm. you know, for the unscrupulous people that you do come across time to time, Think of some of the, the great friends you've made that have turned into family. Exactly. And just think of some of the, the audience and the, <laughs> the comedic figures that you've met that you would have never met mm-hmm. in any other form of life yep. outside of professional wrestling. Exactly. And I mean, for those, that, like you said, there are some that just seem to be bitter about everything in the world, yeah. but they forget about the bright side. The bright side about yeah. it. It starts to pour and thunder behind us right yes. now. But that's all on right. On WrestleMania Day, yeah. yeah I, I get another one. Yeah, well, you know, good thing was I took them to where the prices were so low um, with the airlines. We actually uh-huh. went to, you know, did the Orlando thing last month. Okay. And it ran like this for about 10 minutes, but they, they had to have ponchos. So $50 yeah. on Universal Studio oh. ponchos. But I tell you this, those ponchos came in quite handy last night. Oh, yeah, you I were we, using, huh? Yep, okay. yep, we were as dry as a bone. $50 and I, worth. <laughs> I, I, tell me the logic behind this. Some guy came up to me in the concourse and goes, mm-hmm. with the big Universal Studio logo on my stomach, Yeah. oh, where did you get those? <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, Raymond <laughs> James Stadium has a, a, a hidden... Secret stash yeah, of Universal yeah. Studio ponchos. But again, fans, if you want to check out his great books, whether it be the physical, the online, or the audio version, you go to Amazon. Amazon. You go to Amazon. Com. Yeah, Is it available on your own website or just Amazon? Just Amazon. Amazon and also um, Google, Google Play. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's very moderately priced. Is yeah. it not? Yeah. I think, isn't the online version I can't, just I can't, a few bucks? It's just a few bucks, probably like. Six or eight, six to eight bucks. So we're not talking a twenty four ninety nine, uh, <laughs> you know, Borders bookstore special. This is something you can read, enjoy, have some laughs. Uh, smarter fans maybe can read between the lines. I was oh, yeah. told about a few things. Yeah, and... I didn't. I didn't. I, I, for the fans, I wanted them to have some fun, so I didn't. I didn't drop any names, but I left a lot of clues, so you guys figured out. It's like a mystery. It's like Scooby Doo yeah. <laughs> with JTG. All right, wrestling... don't DM me. Don't be like, hey, <laughs> I read your book. Which, which wrestler you talk about? Figure it out. I got so many DMs. Oh man, I, I think I know who it is, but can you tell me? Like, no, figure it out. <laughs> now I want to read it. I want to figure it out. All right, wrestling fans, we're going to take a brief time out. Uh, you may recognize the man coming up in another one of JTG's out of wrestling ventures. I'll give you a hint. It's got a little something to do with training. Check it out. Wrestling fans, I'm Dan Marotti. And this is the man of the hour, Leo Rush. It was all over bostonwrestling.com and our social media. But Leo, brother, they got to check out some of this merch. They got to. Check it out, fans, right now available on eBay. As the Demon, he became the first WWE Universal Champion at SummerSlam 2016. Here's your chance to own this limited edition collector's autographed art print personally signed by Finn Balor, one of only 50 made direct from our friends at WWE, also signed by original artist Rob Schamberger. Help keep wrestling legends working. Get this awesome collectible for your wrestling collection now. Ah... Cheer. Why, hello. I would ask what was on your mind, but I already know. You want to know what has got my beard looking oh so majestic. And I'll tell you, it's sexy as hell beard care. Coconut oil, vitamin E oil, almond oil, both sweet and bitter, shea butter, it's all natural. Yes, JTG has actually come out with a high quality product. So support your boy by going to sahbeardcare.com and take one step closer to becoming sexy 
as wrestling fans especially here in the boston area we want to thank our great friends at red rose for their support for all of our charitable endeavors and programming efforts red rose is two years young and extremely thankful for all the support they've had from our neighbors here in melrose and beyond for an amazing first two years red rose thanks melrose and all of the first responders who have fought the good fight and have never given up hope during these unprecedented times. We did it together. Follow Red Rose on Facebook for their anniversary special, facebook.com backslash Red Rose Melrose. You'll be glad you did. Open until 2 a.m. Red Rose will give you fresh, piping hot, mouth-watering food that'll put an ear-to-ear -ear smile on even the toughest critic's face. Check out their full menu online at redrosema.com or give them a call. 781-620-1889. All right, wrestling fans, welcome back to Wrestling Inside. It's having fun with JTG, a guy. You know, like I said, we've been trying to set things up for a while. You have uh, a little G in Boston, so I yeah. thought maybe you'd be around more, and then that wild virus hit. Uh, what has it done to you as a guy, you know, still in the, the prime of his career as far as the way you look at uh, athleticism, age-wise, and so on? Uh -huh. I mean, it really had to put an anchor around your waist. Yeah, the COVID situation, absolutely. You think I'm big now? I had to stop going to the gym for, for a couple of months, so I, I'd have been in a lot better shape. But no, nah, I, I, I made it do what it do. <laughs> and then the, the, the bookings. I, was, I had so many overseas bookings I was looking forward to. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, Chad and I were supposed to go to Africa. Never been to Africa. I, this would have been my third attempt going to Africa. And then... So what happened to the other attempts? The first attempt, I got fired. Oh, you were going to go with WWE? Yeah, WWE. Okay. Oh, well, Our well, bags were literally packed. Our bags were literally packed to go to Africa for, I think, for about a week. And then right before we uh, was about to fly out that Monday night, I got, Shad and I got fired that Monday, <laughs> that Monday. <laughs> and then the second time, uh, we had a show in um, Africa. I think one of the main event stars got injured, so they wanted to postpone it. And then they postponed it, and then they pushed it back to, and then that's when COVID hit. So I, I don't know if there's a there's a curse. I'm not supposed to go touch African soil, but I'm gonna make it happen. You're gonna make it happen. I'm gonna make it definitely make, make it happen. It happen. <laughs> they made that great promotional video about Kofi when he went home. I don't know if you ever saw. I that do remember YouTube. seeing that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that was really good. Yeah, that was good. Nice, but just, just a little montage. Huh? Just in general, at least you're a man that has outside of wrestling endeavors with your. Uh, beard care line. That Sexy as hell beard care. Before. Beard and body now. Before it was just beard. Now we're doing beard and body. Well, this body needs a lot of work, brother. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think you get enough care for this body. I, but we just showed them the commercial with Kofi, so they know how to get the okay, hands then you on the see, good stuff. You got to show them the new I'm one. Just, Maybe you could put it, insert it right about now. Well, you, <laughs> you, you send it, we play it. That's right, how we go. it goes. Let's you're, do it. You're part of the family, brother. Um, I lost my train of thought for a second, but that's normal. For you talking show, about my but... business endeavors? Not only do oh, I yeah. have, so I mean, you know, you 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 trying the acting gig, you're trying okay. the comedy gig. You know, you've been writing. A little I have. Bit. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar now. This, well, been, this has been got? my hottest uh, item. T moss. What T moss? So what I don't know if you're that? familiar with C moss, but um, during uh, I've been taking this for two years, and it definitely helped me during the pandemic. So C moss is a uh, is a um, a plant from the ocean. It's a, it's a sea moss from the ocean. And you could um, take it from the ocean and then you boil it, turn it into a gel. And it has 92, 92 minerals and vitamins that your body needs out of the 100. And then it helps with um, inflammation. It detoxes the body. It, uh, it gets rid of, um, removes the mucus from your body. And I've been taking that. And then also I added four testosterone boosting uh, ingredients to it to help boost your testosterone. So that's why I call it tea moss. The tea is for testosterone. So tea moss, and that naturally raises your testosterone levels. Do you have a commercial for this? I, of course I do. Well, I'll, send, I mean, I'll send it all to you. You're going to be in competition <laughs> with Vince to see who can get the more plugs on our shows, but we're happy to run it. Like I said, samples are always appreciated. So I'll, I send you, I'll definitely send you a bottle. Review, an honest review. Okay. No, well, I mean, it ain't the best taste, and you want the results, so don't worry about the taste. I'm just letting you know that right results. now. I need results. <laughs> exactly. You, Believe you, you me, want when I talk about taste, you should have seen me dealing with Linda Marati. Wait, 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 when I, when I go to the gym, I'm like, so what are you taking? Like, I'm, like, I'm, I'm natural. I'm like, stop it. You're like, no, I'm natural. I'm really natural. And they're like, I tell them what I take. I take sea moss. I take Tonga Dali. I take ashwagandha. I take uh, horny go. Like, I take. Oh, it has to be natural. I see some of my co colleagues. I'm not going to say any names. They were or a lot of, on a lot of gas, 
and they had to, you know, have, you know, have surgery, you know, because you, you only can take that for so long. And right. They had horrible side effects, horrible effects. So, yeah, I don't recommend anybody taking any steroids, uh, human growth hormone, um, and anything anabolic. Just try to be as natural as you can. Now, how did, you come, how did you come across this? I mean, were you snorkeling one day and said, geez, oh, this no. looks like an interesting plant. Let me grab some and well, try and develop something. With two, it. two reasons. Um, in the Caribbean, sea moss is used as a libido enhancer. Oh. Yeah, so well, men. Yeah, they have these for kids, so <laughs> it's working really good for you. Yeah, there you go. So <laughs> that's what it was known for. It made its popularity for being a libido enhancer. And then um, I came across. Um, uh, a celebrity, a celebrity herbalist called Dr. Sebi, mm -hmm. and he he cured uh, p people of AIDS, cancer. Um, he he put he he says that all diseases could be could be cured. So I started doing research on him and watching a lot of his documentaries, and I came across sea moss, and he talked about it. And this man, he says he take he takes sea moss every morning. And that his bone, it also helps with your bones. You know, I need that for my joints and bones. Yeah, and right. in front of a live audience, he, an 80 year old man dropped down in front of a, um, in front of a live audience to his knees and it echoed throughout the, throughout the, um, the, what he was doing the, the conference at. And everybody was like, ooh and ah. And he was like, yeah, I drink sea moss every morning. It makes my bones, you know, hard. And I could definitely, um, say that it definitely works. I get bumped around all the time. I go to the gym. I put a lot of abuse in my body, but I take sea moss every morning and it helps. Wow, so you, you really have, have gone out of your way to come up with uh, interests outside of the king of sports professional wrestling, and it's done you well. It's doing me great, I mean, yes. look at how many guys have literally, you know, not uh, just been, been crushed due to coronavirus, due to the loss of the bookings, mm -hmm. the autograph signings, the conventions, and yep. you just keep plugging along because you have so many things going on. Exactly. T-Malls.com. You're going to keep plugging it. <laughs> like I said, the commercial is welcome. You can throw the cheap plugs in, too. That's fine. We've had that Kofi one for a while, and I've had a lot of fun with the people. Sometimes I don't even think they realize it's him for a second because yeah. you know, he has a little <laughs> accent, and he's in his bathroom at home with yeah. the towel around. Having fun, head. yeah. And they're like, wait a minute, that is Kofi. Yep. And then, the, you know, there's that little QVC picture of you that pops up in the corner of the screen. And <laughs> so you, you, you've done very well. Yeah, I'm so doing It's a good life right Yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying No complaints. You know? Well, as we continue this episode, I, I think I'd almost be doing a disservice uh -huh. uh, if we didn't bring up the, the what do they call it? The two hundred pound elephant in the room, which was the passing. Oh, the passing of, of yeah, Shad, yeah. Uh, during the virus, as a matter of fact, last yep. year, and I mean that must have been. I know how it, it felt for me for somebody. It hit me really hard. Yeah. For you, he was a way of life. Yeah, that was not only my tag team partner, best friend. If I had any issues, you know, that was, you know, when I was going through my divorce, you know, he was there and helped me a lot. And, you know, Shad, let me tell you a little cool Shad story <laughs> real quick. Uh, and only Shad could do this to me because we've known each other. We're, we're, we're that close and we've known each other for that long. I remember um, he was taking me to the gym. This was during my, I was like really depressed. And, you know, I was having like these little outbursts where I'd be quiet. He'd be like, yo, Jay, snap out of it. Like I was really like, I don't know if anybody's ever been divorced, but it, it, it hits a man really hard. And then we was trying to go to the gym. And then we tried to go to the gym and I was just like, Going through the motions, you're like, we're not going to do this today. We went to the beach. Went to the beach. Um, I let some tears out because he, he, know, he knows how to get into my head, uh, Shad. And um, I cried on the beach. We talked and we just started running. And uh, we had our like uh, Rocky and um, Apollo moment on the beach. <laughs> and then after all of that, um, he's like, how you feeling? I said, I feel a lot better. I appreciate that, Shad. Uh, no problem. So you good? I'm like, yeah, I'm good, man. I'm going to be a lot better. He's like, all right, um, so you go, I'm going to take you home now. So who's, who's at your house? I'm like, nobody, it's just, just me. Like, oh. I'm going to go back to my wife and son and, um, and enjoy my marriage. And, <laughs> and then we, because it was funny, because I know that's the type of relationship we have. We love roasting each other. I don't know if you follow me on Instagram. Every, every um, January 13th is his birthday. I will put out a um, post and just, and just roast him and have the fans join in. And that's what I miss most about. I, I miss I miss roasting my buddy. So you were going through a divorce during coronavirus? On no, no, no. This one was like years back. Yeah, yeah, this was years back. I just yeah, the story from way back. But um, during the coronavirus, um, yeah, I got, it was weird. I was in my backyard. I don't know if you're superstitious or not or anything. I was very in my backyard. Much, very much. It was a Sunday. I was in my backyard, and a bunch of black crows came on my um on my electric, on my electric lines, and I'm like. This is weird. 
and they were just sitting there staring at me. And then later on that night, that's when his wife called me. Really? And same she, day? Same night. Yeah, same day. And she was, and I thought it was a rib because she, she called from Shad's phone. Mm -hmm. She called from Shad's phone. I'm like, what do you want? And it was, it was his wife because that's how I talked to Shad. Yeah, I was like, yeah, what yeah, do you yeah. want? It's late. I'm going to bed. Like, <laughs> she's like, um, this is uh, Sylvia. This is Shad. You, and I'm like, uh, hey, what's up? What's going on? And I thought it was a, I thought it was an elaborate prank. He was like, I can't find Shad. Um, we were at the beach and we can't find him. And I'm like, I'm gonna go along with this prank because he got his wife involved. He's like, I'm just gonna go along with the prank. I'm, I was hoping it was a prank. We can't find him. Anyway, I get get in the shower, brush my teeth, and I head over there. And she's like, Oh, I'm coming now. I had to go get flashlights. And I'm like, Wait, what? You're looking for why we need to find Shad? Why we need flashlights? Six, what, seven, <laughs> two hundred and eighty pounds. Um, so we get the flashlights. And then she's not telling me exactly what happened. I'm like lost. And she didn't want to tell me because his son was in the car. So she, she waited a little bit and then she talked, she broke it down to me, like the details. And I'm like, this is not looking good at all. Like, I didn't like, I was keeping hope alive for her. Like, mm -hmm. cause I know she was probably in denial a little bit, but it was confirmed to me. Like when we got on the beach and we were, we were, I don't know where to look. I didn't know where to look in the ocean to look on the, the boardwalk on, on the beach itself. I'm like, I kind of accepted it like that that night. We were on the beach for like, we got there, uh, I got there like at nine. I didn't get home till like one o'clock in the morning. She actually went down the beach. I went down the beach and, we, and I was looking for Shad, yeah, with, with his wife and his son, yeah. And we had some we had some friends too, but I kind of accepted it that night. And it was a, a rip current? It was a rip. Yeah, yeah I had to do some ball. research because I'm like, Shad is big. He's tall. He's a great swimmer. We're both from the Caribbean. So we, we every time we go to... To, to, to back home, like he's from Curacao or um, Haiti. I'm from Trinidad. We go to the beach, we swim, you know. But like a fish. Yeah, we, that's where we were. We were fishers. We, we, we were great swimmers. So I had to figure out what took my boy down. Like, and so I had to research a riptide. Riptide, you you can't. It's hard to fight that. You have to be like strategic. You have to be a well because the way it pulls you, you have to swim sideways and you just have to let it go with the flow. Your know, immediate reaction is to panic. So I guess that's what. That's what happened to him. Um, I think he he got just got tired because I heard it, he keeps pulling you and you, you're swimming trying to get to the to the shore, but it just keeps pulling you and you're just like, you know what? Screw it. You get tired, your body just just gives out. Well, you know what? At least the little one. Yes, the little one. You. Yeah. I know it was funny as this was going on. We did an episode about it with Tony Atlas and he yeah. talked about where he wrestled in Puerto Rico an awful lot. He got caught in one and he said it seemed like I moved. 50 feet, literally, in just seconds. Uh -huh. And he said, which I'm sure Shad probably didn't know, as I'm sure he wasn't an expert in yeah. you know, rip tides, rip currents, and whatnot. But the key is is to swim in the opposite direction, sideways, as yeah. opposed to trying to go back to the shore. Yeah. And you know, maybe if everybody was taught that in swimming classes, yeah. there'd be other training. I don't even know what or a even signs at the yeah. beach. You know what I mean? Maybe uh, go out on the nose. I don't even know what a rip tide was. I had to Google it myself, like, man. And I don't think and I've, Tony's a big guy too. I don't know? think I've been in the ocean since 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 the situation. Really? I'm not, I mean, I mean, I'm not. I mean, I'll go in it, but I just hadn't have any reason. I, I don't know. <laughs> but I tell you, one of the the greatest outpourings I've ever seen, and uh, the loss of one of the boys. Yeah. All the, the the nice work that was done online, that GoFundMe. You know, I'm glad we were able to raise the money we did. I wish we could have even done a little more, but I mean, it hit its goal, uh -huh. and then some to try and help the family, which I thought was really nice. Uh, the photos I saw from the services with the guys that came in from, you well, know, all I know, Al, I remember I saw was there. He's out yeah. in Kentucky. Kali was there, and I think Shelton. Yeah, Shelton was there. there. Yeah, MVP, guys, Carlito, um, I remember uh, Victoria, Mickey James came. Um, a lot of people sh showed some love. There was yeah. some, it was really nice. You hate to say it, some really nice pictures that came from it. But yeah. Just to see everybody coming together. You know, to pay their respects like that, I thought that was really nice, and hopefully, it meant something to his wife. Oh yeah, they, they're doing a lot life. better now. You know, we all was devastated by it. Um, I needed some. I needed a time out from the world. I needed to like, is this real? Like, this is really happening? Like, and then, I, you know, I'm doing a lot better. I'm a great. I'm in a great place right now. I'm Good. doing a lot better. Good. Yeah. And and you know, sometimes you have to get to that point where you know the, where the tears dry up and you have to honor them. I remember. Very different circumstances, but when Paul Bearer passed away, he was like that hit you a hard. second dad yeah. to me. Yeah. And I got a call from WWE at 1230 
after the SmackDown taping that night to tell me that it happened. And what was the horrible thing Can't about it was, after that. <laughs> we had him booked uh-huh. for an event that Saturday, mm. and that was when the services were. Man. So I couldn't even go. Yeah. And I remember X Pac, he was on the show and he was very tight with me too. Uh-huh. You know, he said, without a doubt, your ass, he would tell you to have your ass at this event. Mm. And we did, we did a nice in ring ceremony and all the guys <clears throat> came out on the stage and so on. But, you know, it took me, he passed in 13. I didn't get to go to his cemetery plot until the WrestleMania in New Orleans, which I think was 18. And even then, mm. Mobile, Alabama, you know, it was still two hours from New Orleans, but yeah. it, it felt really good to be able to go, mm, you know what I mean, okay. to see it and say what I wanted to say silently and so on, and then drove back to New Orleans um, to, to the end, the, it was the day after WrestleMania. WrestleMania, okay. Yeah, it was, but it was, it, it's just, it's tough, but for someone that was just such a young man that didn't have, you know, health problems and gastric bypass surgeries yeah. like Paul Bearer did and so on, it yeah. just... I, I really I felt for you after yeah. we had just that experience the year before. You know, we had fun that day. I think I have the picture of you guys with um, animals still on my phone. Oh, yeah. That yeah. I took. Yeah. And, I, and you, the only one out of the three left. Because funny oh, enough, yeah. wow. Joe was going to be with us before Corona hit. We had this big um, back to the 80s type reunion yeah. Live wrestling with like a fan fest to go along with it. Yeah. And Joe was really interested in doing the show like this back in the studio with us. Mm-hmm. And now I don't have another one. Just it'll never happen. Another one out of nowhere. No real health problems. Yeah. You know, you can imagine you mentioned earlier the gas. Yeah. What he had done over the years that yeah. probably wears on the hot yes. quite a bit. Yeah. So it's really, and sometimes never a surprise when you hear guys from certain eras and whatnot that did certain things yeah. that may contribute to an early death. I know, like yeah. they said, um, Ultimate Warrior, they said, oh, his, uh, it came back in the autopsy that he had a heart attack. It didn't have anything to do with steroids. And it's like, what? What? Well, I'm a conspiracy theorist, <laughs> you know so anything? I have a whole thing about that. Oh, yeah. well, I can hear the conspiracy now, Alex. Oh, Jones. man. I just about? find it very... Uh... Coincidental that is the day after mo- that Monday Night Raw. That's all I have to say. I just find it very coincidental that. Oh, it ha- that's it. That it happened after. Uh, it was, ha- huh? It was. What well, is more? I just don't want to get into too much. Oh, no, too no, much you got detail. Me now. <laughs> what is the conspiracy? Well, the, the, some of the conspiracies uh, online is that um, somebody wanted him dead. Really? Yeah. Somebody wanted him dead, and I don't know what. Ha- uh, they got him to sign off on some 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 stuff and whatever, and then he just died of a heart attack the day. The day well, after. if you remember from the Hall of Fame, he came out looking awful. I mean, he had a a towel and he was wiping the sweat off of his mm. face. And I, mean, I don't, did I, I don't think I seen. Did I watch it? I can't remember, but uh, yeah, I yeah. think I did watch it. So yeah, it was yeah. just then. It. I, I've never seen anything like it during a Hall of Fame induction. Mm. I mean, it was almost like he came from the gym and was. <sighs> In a suit and trying to give a Hall of Fame induction, he was uh-huh. he was blown up giving a speech. Yeah, and he, so, I, I remember. Yeah, he was all. I thought when he was, gave that promo in the Raw on Raw, I thought because he had a whole suit on and he that's why he was sweating so much and uh, he was just, out of breath. He was just sweating <laughs> the whole weekend, I guess. Yeah. And well, and just another one that was gone too soon. Too but, soon. I don't know. You know, before we wrap up this episode, I know we're going to tape a few of them to try and break down your great career and continue uh, to hustle your uh, all the good stuff you got going on. But any final messages, any final thoughts about Chad that maybe the fans wouldn't know that they might enjoy? Oh, think about Chad. Um, very positive. You know, he could take a negative situation and just either make fun of it or <laughs> turn and just make make everybody in the room uplift their spirit. And that's what Chad Chad's about, and that's what I've taking it to my life. I just want to help people. I tell when I get uh, being one of the leaders in the locker room, especially on the independent scene, you know, I, I let people know that I'm here to help. If you have any, if you need help with your matches. And I got that from Shad. Shad always wanted to help. I'm like, we have to get our match together. Why you worry? <laughs> why you don't worry about everybody else? And um, I see, I see why he did it. I see why he did it. And now I'm doing the same thing. Well, and you know, what What can you really do and try and keep, just carry on carry on memory in the most positive way possible? You know? Exactly. All right. Well, you know what, folks? I really enjoyed this episode. I'm very interested in your thoughts. As always, if you're watching the premiere on Wednesday night at 10 o'clock, um, give us a note, your thoughts in the little uh, premiere chat box. 
As always, if you've enjoyed the show, don't forget to tip the bartender. The Super Chat is open for business. If you come across this episode after the premiere, uh, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. We love your feedback and know what you guys think so we can bring you the best episodes possible. Obviously, you can tell we're not in Boston at our studio. This is part of our WrestleMania Week in Tampa Wrestle House adventure where we've had a lot of fun with so many great guests, so many different stories and experiences with many more to come. Uh, we look forward to the episodes we're going to produce today coming your way, and hopefully we can get this man back to Boston sometime soon, especially later in 2021 when we can have live events with more than 12% capacity. Wouldn't go. that be something, That'd right? That would be amazing. Oh. <laughs> For my friend JTG, I'm Dan Marotti. We will see you soon on Wrestling Insiders. Until we speak again, folks, you and yours, be well, stay healthy. Good night. Sure. The World Wrestling Federation was live at the Cumberland County Civic Center in Portland, Maine, Tuesday, June 2nd, 1981. In the opening contest, Johnny Rods beat Fred Marzino. Duke of Dorchester Pete Doherty battled Steve King to a time limit draw. Rick Martel, Tony Guerrier, and Rick McGraw with the win over WWF Tag Team Champions, the Moondogs, and Captain Lou Albano in a best two out of three falls match. Johnny Rods defeated Angelo Gomez, and in the main event, the WWF Intercontinental Champion Pedro Morales retained the title over Angelo Mosca via disqualification. If you were in Portland Live, share your memories in the comment section below. Use the links in the description box to keep wrestling legends in our eBay store and on our world-renowned Patreon streaming service so we can bring you more interactive superstar shoot interviews to relive the good old days of professional wrestling. Check it out. Boston Wrestling Sports in the MWF explodes into a new year with professional wrestling content galore and need you to join our family. Every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after our Monday Night Raw review, it's Wrestling Inside Us at your house with WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. after NXT and AEW, join rotating legends on Wrestling Insiders Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Journey on Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. Friday night after SmackDown, don't miss John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, history videos, bonus live episodes, pay per view, watch alongs, and more. For less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, get early ad free access to our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library, and help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times. Join our growing family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Expect the unexpected in 2021.